Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, we're wrapping up Autodesk University 2018 with one final interview from another AEC Excellence Award winner. We have Eva Erickson and Christopher Hungland. Very good did pronunciation. I, did, I get did we get it right? Pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. Perfect. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> awesome. So before we start, how's AU been going for you? Only a few more hours to go. Yeah, it was uh, really nice to uh, win the prize. You okay. Know? <laughs> so was this the first year that you were in the running, or have you been involved before? Because I know sometimes companies get uh, nominated more than once. Uh, we had a talk uh, last year. Okay. So we had a class and talked about uh, our project. Okay. And uh, this year we had a prize. How cool is that? Yeah. Very nice. So could both of you give us a little understanding about who it is you work for as well as what you do there? Yeah. Uh, I work for an architectural firm called Nordic Office of Architecture. We're based in Norway and we're closing into 200 people. Okay. Um, I'm an architect, but I'm working as a big manager full time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you, Christopher? Yeah, I'm uh, working at an engineer company called Kovi. It's a Danish uh, company and it has uh, 8,000 people all, all over the world, also here in the US. Okay, okay. I think it's interesting because most of the groups that we interview are from one company and you two have collaborated together for this project. Yeah, we are like, um, we are going uh, into the projects uh, as a group with the architects and the engineering team, like a group. Okay. So could you talk a little bit more about the specific project that you were nominated for? Yes, uh, it's a big hospital okay. uh, project. And um, in that area where it's it's built, uh, it's a lot of oil workers. Okay. And, and like the oil prices went down and they wanted to make something uh, good for the community around there, mm -hmm. and I wanted to try to industrialize or working with modules. Okay. Because they have a lot of um, skills in that uh, area. Okay. From the offshore industry. So I don't know if this is considered medium or large or whatnot with what you're working for, but to me, this was a huge project. What was it, 650 patient rooms, 100,000 square meters of floor space, uh, over four buildings? Um, yeah, it's... Even more? Yeah, even more. Even uh, more yeah. than that? Yeah, but you wow. can... Yeah, basically like four major buildings that are connected with a... It's like a bridge in the second and third floor. So, with multiple companies and teams working on it and hundreds of people involved, how did you keep everybody on the same page throughout this process? Um, we're, our, we're, we have a very tight-knit cross-disciplinary team. Okay. Um, we have frequent meetings and we always discuss and agree on workflows before we initi initiate them. Uh, for example, we have a master file. Uh, defining all the grids and levels and origin, origin points for the project. So everyone is always working with the same base. And yeah, it's always discussed uh, cross-disciplinary before we make any decisions uh, to ensure that the workflow will be suitable for all parties and not just for the architect or just for the electrical engineer. So, so how many people at one time would be collaborating on the project, would you say? Um, I just know that right now the architectural team is like 20 to 25 people. Okay. I don't know about the engineers. Yeah, it's, it's uh, similar. Okay, yeah. so, so up, upwards of 50 people potentially collaborating on the same project. Yeah. yeah. And usually working off of the same master model? No, it's uh, each discipline have had to split their files into several files. Mm -hmm. But we all link everything together. Um, and then we have that master file containing just the grids and the levels that we, you know, use as a base. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So there was, uh, it looked like there was a, a focus on um, some natural lighting and some connections with nature. So from the, uh, the, some of the requirements for the project had that. Could, could you talk about what some of those requirements were and how they drove some of the, uh, the design? It's, uh, you know, there's been numerous studies that show that, um, if 
you have connection to nature, if you're able to look at trees and greenery, you recover faster. Wow. Uh, several studies okay. have shown that. You recover so, from like surgery? Yeah, surgery, uh, illness, and oh. you know, like your general well-being. If, if you work out of an office space and you can just, when you look out the window, instead of looking at another building, you can see a park, then, you know, that will improve your health okay. in the long run. Wow. So, so that was some of the requirements with the project? Yeah, or basically it's just really basic when you design a hospital. Okay. It's like, number one, how can we make the building improve the health of the patients? That's great. I, I know I've been in <laughs> hospitals where they were just big gray rooms <laughs> yeah. and I yeah. just sit in there and I feel miserable. And, and then I visited, I guess I never thought about that. I visited hospitals and they have like, the, the rooms are nice and they have nice big wide open windows and you definitely feel better when you're in them. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I've never thought about that, nor did yeah. I know there were studies that went along with it. That's yeah. really interesting. There you go. So I understand that Nordic takes advantage of uh, building information modeling for basically all of their projects at yeah. this point, right? So how did things go when you had to bring additional companies in on such a large scale that might not have been as familiar? Um, working with BIM is not really something special in Norway. Okay. Like. Everyone expects that from a large project. So everyone involved is, you know, know that that will be a requirement and it's also in the contract. There's a yeah. big manual to follow and it's like <laughs> these are the requirements, you know, yeah, like yeah, if you can't meet it then you're out of the team. So really? So Christopher, you she mentioned that in Norway that it's kind of expected. It sounds like your company works all over the place. Is that typical or is is that kind of unique in Norway that that's an expectation? Or is BIM becoming more of a requirement when you're working with all these different organizations? Yeah, all over Scandinavia it's uh, getting more and more. Okay. Yeah. And, and what about worldwide, other places that you're working? It's, it's the best in Scandinavia. Really? <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're not just saying that because no. you're from Scandinavia. That Scandinavia. <laughs> I was actually reading a lot about this as I was going through looking at what the different companies were doing. And I saw that the UK, yeah, uh, UK w was doing good. well, Scandinavia was doing well. And then there's other countries that it's like, oh, this isn't followed at all. This isn't even, even in consideration yet, which kind of blew my mind that mm -hmm. it, there could be such yeah. a diversity between things like that. Yeah. yeah, I actually heard a talk about that not too long ago. And they had looked at, uh, you know, the government in each country you know if they have requirements if they jump on board early you can so you can see that the Scandinavian countries they were like really fast at picking up and realizing okay we have to make sure that we have a strategy for this and we know how we want to implement it and yeah so basically that's the fast answer for that why we're on the top right now <laughs> I, I like it wow so um there was something I, we read about, uh, something about preventing some wind tunnel effects with the project. Could you talk about that a little bit and and, and what was involved in, in that? Uh, that was just done in the early phase of the project and we okay. used uh, Autodesk Flow design for that. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Hey, that's, 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 that's our, our sweet it's spot It's one here. of the products I used to market. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I, I actually used to be a CFD person. So Yeah, then uh, you know way more about it than I do. So, <laughs> so, you, actually, so you, you actually brought you know a model in and oriented it differently and yeah. did some flow studies. Yeah. That's great. That's really cool. I, I did not expect that to be the answer. That's very... I, I didn't either. That's great. I also saw that you were uh, working to pick the correct kind of glass for this structure. Is that going back to the natural light coming in and making sure that there was shade where it needed to be to help with recovery? Yeah. Um, I'm not really... Very, you know, I don't know much about that phase okay. uh, or that part of the project, but it's just... Uh, we have, you know, the people working with the daylight analysis, you know, they, I guess they just look at, you know, the directions, you have north facing facades or whatever, and they can, you know, we know, ev I guess everyone understands that, hey, we don't need the same type of glass on all di in all directions, you know, because north, you, you uh -huh. never get sun there, and so. Okay, makes we, sense. Yeah. So there are a couple things that, um, I don't want to say I had no idea what that you were talking about, <laughs> but... <laughs> Could you tell me what DFMA is <laughs> and why that is important? Because it seemed like it was. I just yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah, this uh, goes back to the client that wanted to uh, make modules all over the project. So w we needed to find out how could we design modules in this design tool. So we contacted uh, Autodesk and had a meeting. And that's where Project Frog is coming in. 
also that was my next question was yeah. what's Project Frog? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, they um, do all the manufacturing and design. Um, they are based at uh, San Francisco. Oh, I should have known this maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they um, uh, they have a, like a module uh, school system. You can go into the online and just uh, design a building as a client. And then you can tr just press a button and it will send it to them. And then you can make a Revit file from that design. Wow. So they had a good experience in uh, prefabrication and uh, oh. modules. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That is. I don't think yeah. I've ever heard of Project Frog. I'm I gonna know. have to look. I'm gonna have yeah, to look yeah, into yeah. this yeah. now. So is, it, is that relatively new? Yeah, they are working on it. We are beta testers. Oh, so. oh okay. That, that, that makes that me feel better. I, yeah. I don't feel bad now. That's why I don't <laughs> know about it. It's beta. But 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 uh, the pro uh, program is not ready yet. So okay. we needed to do something ourselves. So we came up with uh, an idea ourselves. Uh, we are using like placeholders for defining all those uh, locations for the modules, and um, every discipline just uh, has that file in their uh, linked in that placeholder file, and they can place out like a one uh, bathroom. They can place it all over the project. Okay, seems like it would really speed up the whole. Oh yeah, project yeah because every, quite a bit. every discipline has uh, that same file linked in. So you just uh, design one module, and then you can just press some buttons, and it will uh, push out all the others. I like it. And then, if you update one, will it update all of them? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! And if uh, someone just adds one more module, we can track that as a change, and just press synchronize, and it will pop in. That's awesome. <laughs> So this is a question for both of you. You can answer one after the other. Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Ava. Is uh, your highlight, other than winning the award, which is awesome, uh, what's been your highlight of Autodesk University uh, so far? Um, <laughs> I guess it's meeting people. Networking? Yeah, because that's really good. Because we're sort of a bit isolated, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say, back home. <laughs> So this is your second Autodesk University. You were here last year presenting, yeah. and then the award uh, this year. I'll, no, I wasn't uh, presenting last year, but I've been here before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is my second time. And Christopher, yeah. your yeah. your highlight? Uh, it uh, must be Forge DevCon. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you were here early uh, in the week yeah. for that. Okay. Yeah. It was uh, really interesting to see what's coming in there. And, uh, in uh, using uh, the. Um, uh, sky, not sky. <laughs> What's it called? The cloud. The cloud. The cloud. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I knew. I would. I would yeah. have guessed what you meant if you said sky. That's, so, so th the word cloud doesn't translate. The, this. I, 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 I guess we just assume that things translate very easily. Yeah, we we we, may, uh, we use sky. Okay. <laughs> as the world in okay. Way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning all sorts. of I stuff. know. We're learning all this kinds is of great. stuff. Great. So, normally we would wrap up with, okay, what are you looking forward to for the rest of Autodesk University? But there's but nothing mean, else left. <laughs> we're, we're getting down there, so yeah, I guess... I actually have some really interesting classes left today. Oh, you so do? Yeah, do you really? Oh, yeah. oh wow. You're, so you're pushing till the end yeah, of that. Yeah. Well, good for you. <laughs> Get, getting her money's worth, for I sure. Know, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's about it, unless you have some more questions. No, no, I think that's good. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us today. I think this was a lot of fun, and i am I might have learned more here than I have the rest of the week. And congratulations so. again on the award. And uh, hopefully, so we'll hopefully we'll see you here maybe next year for uh, another award or maybe another class you're presenting. We'll see. We yeah. hope so. Get another big project going. Good yeah. luck. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.